for anyone who couldn't tell. There we go. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here again uh, for today's social component of our reunion activities. I'm going to be very brief um, as I know you all are anxiously awaiting our next step. So just a few housekeeping rules for you all today. Um, we will ask that you all please mute as you join the uh, Zoom today. We also are asking in this Zoom, if you would please use the chat to share your name, your class here, and your uh, site affiliation and your current location. Barbara, thank you so much for pointing that out. I had the logistics mixed up in, in our panel presentation. But again, um, we're really excited to get things started. So with that, again, if you would please mute your audio, uh, turn your video off during the presentation for the 50th class medallions. Um, but you will be able to turn those back on in the second portion of our social um, activity. Again, we ask that you use the uh, chat function to introduce yourself. So your name, your class year, your site affiliation, and your current location, if you like. And with that, I will turn it over to the Associate Dean of Development and uh, Alumni Relations, William Roth. Thank you, Christina. And uh, thank you all for participating. And uh, this is my opportunity to say congratulations to all of the reunion classes and the members uh, who have joined us uh, in particular, uh, the, the class of 1970, the 50th uh, reunion class and this medallion ceremony that we're about to have. But obviously I also wanna thank the members of 2010 and 1995 who have also uh, agreed to uh, participate in this, this wonderful forum uh, well, that we have. I want to uh, thank you in particular for joining us and sharing your time, not only uh, today on a Saturday, so throughout the last week uh, or so in the various uh, forums and sessions that we've uh, put together. It's been great to have you join us and hear your reflections on your own time at SICE and also uh, hear the stories and experiences that you've had since. And uh, it's uh, always fun to be around um, SICERs uh, when they get talking and uh, when they share the, the insights from their own lives. It's, uh, it's always an enriching time uh, for all of us. What I will uh, do is uh, set a little bit of the ground rules of how we're going to conduct this ceremony. Uh, it would be great to be able to do this in person, but I, I think we've come up with a reasonable virtual uh, way to do this that will uh, give everyone uh, a chance not only to be celebrated but a chance to share some of their own uh, personal thoughts with the group. What we will do is I'm going to read through uh, a list of names of the class of 1970, our, our 50th uh, anniversary uh, participants, and uh, when I uh, read out their name what we're then going to do is pivot from me to them and allow those individuals to say a few words and uh, share a thought or two, um, about a minute or so if they can, uh, on, uh, on their own uh, reflections, either on the reunion or on their time uh, at SICE. And hopefully we can uh, do this uh, thoughtfully. It's, uh, it's usually this is where you, you get uh, a lot of uh, fun stuff uh, happening. And then at the end of the, uh, uh, sort of role of honor, which are the names of those who have, are attended. Uh, some portion of this reunion programming will then have a, uh, a review of a few slides um, that reflect those of, from the class who uh, cannot be with us um, due to their passing. And we'll have that uh, in memoriam uh, slides that will go on for a few uh, seconds in, uh, in silence as we all reflect on those individuals and uh, and uh, take a moment uh, there. And then as we finish that, I will um, give you some, uh, some uh, encouragement to congratulate these uh, participants for their, not only their fortitude of, of uh, living a life outside of SICE for 50 years beyond, but also um, for joining us uh, for this programming. And then I will wrap up uh, with a few final remarks for uh, how the reunion over. and get you on to the, uh, your uh, breakout 
uh, rooms, which I know uh, you are very much looking forward to. So to uh, start us off, let me um, start with our two co-chairs uh, from the class of 1970. And first, I'll start with uh, Bob Maloney. Hi, can you hear me all right? Yes, Bob, please. Hi, uh, good day to everyone. So good to see some faces that I haven't been able to see for some time. Uh, it's a real privilege to participate in this reunion. I've enjoyed it immensely uh, so far. And I, I've been thinking uh, so much about uh, how our school is uh, trying to reinvent itself uh, to a modern age and the amount of creativity and, and structural uh, analysis that had been undertaken. I just, it's uh, mind boggling to me. And I concur with an earlier observation made this morning uh, that I think I'd have a hard time gaining entrance into SICE these days uh, after listening to some of the marvelous uh, students uh, and their experiences before and while at SICE, remarkable young people. And, and we do indeed and need more of them. SICE was very, very good to me. I had the good fortune of attending several universities and SICE was my favorite of all time. So uh, I tried to stay close to it. My children, two of them have uh, gotten SICE degrees and uh, that's a great uh, feeling of legacy for me. Uh, I still hope to stay engaged and uh, given some good health, I, I hope that can continue forward. And I look forward to uh, chatting with uh, several of you in our social opportunity a little later. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Now let me also uh, bring, to the, bring to the frame uh, our other co-chair, uh, um, Olga Gurkovach, and I want to thank uh, both you, Elga, and you, Bob, for your excellent efforts in chairing the, the reunion and putting together a very thoughtful program uh, that we're all delighted to be a part of. So, Olga, if I could bring you forward. Um, is, can you hear me now? I think I was on mute. Yeah, oh, so sorry about that. I look forward to catching up with so many of you during the social hour. And first of all, I would just like to say how much I enjoyed working with Bob Maloney on the committee. Um, it really was a, a great experience. And after 50 years, it's amazing how much we still remember about SICE. And, and so that was just um, just a wonderful experience. Um, Bob even and I even went through hurricane damage together. So it was a wonderful experience and thank you, Bob. I too um, was lucky to go to several schools and people would ask me over the years, what made SICE special? And to me, it was always the, the students. Um, they were just not only excellent students and, and as superb professionals, but they had interests beyond just their fields. I always thought that the SICE student had so many interests, whether they would be music, food, fine wines, travel, obviously languages. And so it was really a joy. And many of them were very close friends of mine over the years. Um, because I stayed in the Washington DC area, I was really lucky to be able to stay in touch with so many. Um, I think that we will have um, the mem a moment of memory. But for me, today is a very bittersweet day because um, three of my best friends are not here with us and I, they are always in my thoughts. So again, it's just been a wonderful experience. I look forward to the chat afterwards and look forward to hearing from, from the rest of you. Olga, thank you. And uh, very much appreciate um, your efforts and, uh, and those comments. Thank you. Um, next in our sort of role of honor here is uh, Robert Buchanan. Robert, are you there? I, uh, I am. Can you, can you yes, hear Robert. me? You are coming in can clear. Can you see me? Yep. 
Well, it's it's uh, great to be uh, with you on this uh, <laughs> on this day. I, I can hardly believe that it's been 50 years. I was part of the uh, uh, ABMA program, uh, so I spent uh, three undergraduate years at Homewood and then two years at uh, at, at SICE. It was certainly a very exciting academic uh, journey for me and has, uh, has uh, stood me in good stead for the rest of my career, having uh, Hopkins uh, degrees, uh, both uh, in my work on Capitol Hill and, and also in the nonprofit international uh, development sector. Um, I, I, when I think back of uh, what it was like 50 years ago, it was such a turbulent time. This is, this is what I remember mostly about uh, the late 60s and, and uh, coming to graduation from SICE in 1970. It was the uh, anti-war movement. It was the environment movement. There were various liberation movements uh, bubbling up all, all at the same time. And so it was a wonderful opportunity to be in Washington to be among uh, peers and colleagues and people who shared a global perspective. Um, so uh, I think I'll stop there. That those are, those are my thoughts for the moment. Robert, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that. Let me uh, pivot now and we uh, introduce um, Richard Erdman, uh, Ambassador Erdman, if, if you're there. Yeah, I'm here. No, SICE has been uh, one of the great influences on in my life. Uh, first and foremost, I met my wife there who was working for uh, Dean Wilcox, and we re are about to celebrate our 50th. And uh, we developed very close friends, continuing friends who, who continue this day, uh, who were my, my housemates from SICE. And it, needless to say, uh, helped uh, create a, a very solid foundation for my diplomatic career. and. Um, I have, we have lived in uh, abroad many years of our lives in, in Turkey, uh, in Cyprus, in Yugoslavia, in Israel, uh, in Saudi, Saudi Arabia, and, and Algeria, where I was ambassador. Um, so it's been a very uh, interesting life, and, and SICE has played a, a great role in it, and uh, that's what I have to say. Oh, I should also say that I, I have failed in retirement, although I retired from the State Department in 2006. Uh, I went briefly into the private sector, but then started being called out of retirement by the department to take on various ambassadorial uh, jobs, uh, including ambassador, interim ambassador to Saudi Arabia, but mainly at the UN, uh, where I even now today uh, am working during the General Assembly uh, reaching out. Uh, usually I'm in New York, but we have to work virtually this year because of COVID. Uh, but my role has been to work with all the Arab ambassadors on all the issues arising uh, before the General Assembly and uh, the Security Council during the period of the annual General Assembly meeting, which is uh, from September through the end of the year. So that's it. Well, thank you, Ambassador Erdman. Appreciate that. Uh, next uh, in our, our, uh, our flow here is uh, Samar Fay. Samar? There you go. Thank you. I am proud to be in the company of uh, people who have taken their size degrees and gone out into the world and made names for themselves. I used my science degree mostly to understand the world as I was traveling around it as an army wife. But later, organizing and writing skills were useful when I became a newspaper editor. So uh, science wasn't entirely wasted on me, although I didn't use it as some of you did. I remember the turbulent times when there was tear gas blowing down the street when we were at SICE. And my sister went to the uh, demonstration and got gassed, and I didn't. So I was, <laughs> I was always glad that she, she could tell me about it. I've made lifelong friends at SICE. I see that Sue Minnick von Sild is here. 
and I wish that Chick and Hansha Twyman were here. I was looking forward to seeing them and sharing the times that uh, we cooked for the rugby team. And <laughs> sat, I remember the time my then fiance came down, he was in the army, came down from Pennsylvania where he had been serving at the Army War College to hear Henry Kissinger and the crowd was so rude to Kissinger that he left. He never did speak to us, I remember that. But they thought that my fiance, because he was sitting in the back in army uniform, was his bodyguard. Mm. No. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Bay, and that's uh, really, uh, really nice to hear some of those memories. If I can next uh, introduce uh, Douglas Lister. Hello, can you see me? Yes. Uh, well, I don't really have any uh, prepared remarks. I'd just like to say that as a um, a Bologna Center graduate uh, of the class of 1970. Um, how delighted I am to attend uh, this virtual event after the unfortunate cancellation or postponement of the uh, reunion in Bologna in May. And um, I very much hope that um, it can be um, rescheduled perhaps for next year. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Lister, appreciate that. Um, let us uh, continue to move on with uh, Dr. Jaime DeMello. Sir, we see you. If you'd like to, do you want to say a few words? Dr. DeMello, would you like to say a few words? No, okay, now if you would just unmute yourself. Hold on, sir, if you would just unmute yourself. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, hello, it's uh, that's what I did. Okay, now we can hear you. Yeah, um, I, I'm in Mauritius and uh, in Mauritius the uh, internet works well, but it's, it's a bit choppy. So anyway, it's great to be, um, uh, to be with um, all of you and it's a special pleasure to uh, see some Bologna some Bologna friends from uh, 1968, and of course the tear gas that uh, we all had uh, in, uh, for those of us who lived in basements in DuPont Circle in 1969. So I had a great time at SAIS, and then uh, afterwards I went to Homewood. Uh, and then uh, after Homewood, I taught at Georgetown, State of the World Bank, and uh, I'll be glad to talk about uh, what I've done since then. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um, next uh, is uh, Susan Minnick uh, von Sild. Susan? Can you hear me or see me? Yes. Yes, okay. I've been looking forward to this opportunity to, to gather with old sizes. Um, I'm, I'm calling in from Denmark, uh, where I've been since 1976. And before that, um, about six years in Indonesia. And before that, my first job in Washington you know, it was a time just like now when it was tough for kids, uh, graduates to get jobs. And, and um, after a long struggle, Isaiah Frank, uh, our econ uh, economics professor, I don't know, opened the door or pushed the door or spoke to someone anyway. I, I ended up in the uh, Department of Commerce on a major study in the Japanese economy, government business relations and um, in Japan. And that was... Um, once I could, I could use my skills from science, but uh, what I also got out of that long-term study was that um, 
what was going on in Japan in terms of government and business relationships would never work in the U.S. because the U.S. has a confrontational um, approach to to the two parties. And that brings me to the next part. The, in other words, the cultural roots uh, of things, of systems. And that's what I've really devoted my life to. When I moved to Denmark after uh, my period in Indonesia, working in the National Family Planning Program, um, I could use the insights from science as well as um, this understanding of the cultural basis of, of systems and organizations, etc., behavior, of course, uh, to create the, the, the career I've had. Um, we can talk about that later. But I've had the opportunity to, to uh, interview, this is way back in time, uh, a Dane who attended SAIS in the mid 90s and she's done very, very well in her career. And another one about uh, five years later than that and who also taught at SAIS. So at least I've gotten two Danes uh, to, to uh, come to SAIS. And we have a, a group of about 10 or 12 sizers of many ages who, who are in Denmark and who gather occasionally. Uh, previously, it was more often a couple of times a year when, when someone knew an interesting speaker was coming along. But otherwise, we keep, we keep in touch and everybody's done a super job uh, in the jobs they've had. So looking forward to talking with you later. Thank you, Susan. Much appreciated. Um, we're going to um, transition the slide uh, now to the to the next slide. Unfortunately, Constance is not with us uh, this morning, um, but uh, I would like to uh, start with uh, is uh, Craig Olson out there? I, I sort of I, I feel like a radio disc jockey who's uh, yelling out to the to the world saying, "Call in, uh, Craig, are you there?" Oh, I'm told to, to skip um, Craig. So Craig is, is not with us, but this allows a little bit more time for um, Mr. P, T. Michael P. I saw you on, on screen. If you'd like to uh, say a few words, we the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. It is a real, real thrill and an honor to be able to say that you've lived 50 years after SICE. Uh, I get SICE uh, experience and to be among my colleagues, once again, um, SAIS was one of the real treasures of my academic formation. Um, I had the good fortune of spending my junior year, my entire junior year abroad uh, at uh, the University of Paris. Uh, um, and that was, of course, a wonderful preparation to come into a high class school like uh, like SICE, and um, I cannot say enough good things about the quality of the faculty there, and they were all fantastic, but there's one person who stood out who made such a huge impact, positive impact upon my career and thus the quality of my life, and that is um, Professor uh, Stephen Schwabel, who was an adjunct professor of international law and international law was the field that I decided long ago that I wanted to go into and uh, I'll share a little anecdote he pulled me as after the end of a class one day he asked me if I could stay behind for a moment if I didn't have another class I said yes I was free of course what does any student do when you're asked to stay behind uh, a class you figure you start asking yourself what went wrong what did I say or do wrong no it turned out that he said to me you know I've seen it in the course of my uh, of my class you displayed a very high uh, proficiency uh, uh, in international law have you considered going to law school I told him well I had already applied to several law schools including Harvard he said, would you like for me to write you a, a letter of recommendation? I said, I would be honored and thrilled. And, and that he did. I went on to Harvard Law School, became a, um, first a corporate lawyer with uh, uh, Hogan and Hartson, which is a law firm that the Chief Justice came from before he uh, became the Chief Justice. I then went on to be an inter, a, a international human rights lawyer fighting apartheid 
using law as our vehicle. And I don't know if you can see me, I can't see myself. But uh, uh, in any event, um, and then I was eventually recruited into the office of the legal advisor uh, by none other than Professor Stephen Schwebel, who had somehow found me and said there were some openings coming up. Uh, would I be interested? Um, and eventually I did join and um, I had a phenomenal career at the office of the legal advisor. I uh, became one of the office directors very early on in my career. And I went on to spend almost a whole decade abroad as a senior legal advisor to the US mission to the UN in Geneva, where I spent five and a half years and then three years, three and a half years at, in Paris as a US legal uh, counsel to the US mission to UNESCO. I, I'm retired now. I retired in 2012. But five years later, the legal advisor's office asked me if I would, uh, if I would agree to be nominated for a judgeship on the administrative council of the Organization of American States. I said yes, and so that's what I'm doing part time uh, in my uh, retirement and having a wonderful time. All of this because uh, of the critical role that SICE played. So um, thank you, SICE. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's uh, it's always great um, to have these forums uh, because it's uh, for me it's wonderful to be in the company of such underachievers. Uh, it makes uh, you know such a joy for an underachiever like myself to be in such smart company um, here. No, in all seriousness, it's always amazing to hear the dynamic things that everyone is has done and is still doing. Uh, it seems like all of you are keep referring to themes that fight retirement, which uh, again is also um, extremely encouraging. Uh, next up uh, on our, again, our role of honor here is uh, George Pugh. Uh, George, if you would uh, say a few words. Uh, fine, I um, had more or less, I actually, SICE was a great launching pad for me. I had many, many questions about uh, our um, nuclear strategy, and I was able to answer them when I was stationed on the John F. Kennedy. I was in charge of the command reaction and the nuclear war plans for the ship, and discovered uh, that much of what was discussed uh, in the classes, I never bothered with Osgood, but before that at Hopkins undergraduate with um, Dr. Rostein, uh, that Basic, really, we were on a first strike basis uh, from NSC 68. So, but I, I grappled with that. I was a go to guy for the ship and the staff. Uh, I got to see the Yom Kippur War up close and um, thought it was very, that was very, very interesting. I did very little uh, actual intelligence work except standing. Uh, watches. After that, I went ahead and went back to business school and became a CPA and then ended up by selling data on Wall Street for um, many years on the public utility industry, which obviously was aggressively uh, domestic. However, I did, after 9-11, I got back into intelligence in a closed army intelligence site. And SICE has been a wonder for me because it teaches you how to paint a picture that is intellectually persuasive. And I thought that was something that was, um, uh, could not beat it. And that's what it does do. It also teaches you to listen and pay attention to what people are saying, uh, rather than to do some sort of a fan dance uh, trying to show off. And I had have to say the thing was wonderful. And after we're done with this, I am going to go to my friends in the intelligence community and see if I can scare up some people 
to come down and apply because I think it would help them. Also, Elliot Cohen, the dean, mentioned having getting an anthropologist. Could not agree more. Be wonderful, especially for people working with conflict resolution. Give them something else to tap into. Thank you. I will, I'm exhausted. I have, I have nothing left. Have a good day. George, uh, thank you for your uh, comments and thank you for being a stalwart in terms of attending, I think, almost every session that we've sponsored. <laughs> you, you, have, uh, you have endeared yourself deeply to my staff, um, you know, I, I, and uh, that is, that's wonderful. That's a, another joy of these reunions is that folks um, get to be known a little bit better by, uh, by so many different folks. Next in, uh, in our role here, <laughs> is Dr. Uh, Susan Shively, and uh, Dr. Shively, I wanted to give you the, the floor. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Like others, I have uh, very, very, very fond memories of a year in Bologna and also the year in, at SICE in Washington. Um, I went on to go to medical school at the University of Pennsylvania and have been practicing psychiatry and psychoanalysis since, and I'm still part-time practicing since the pandemic. But thank you all very much. It's wonderful to see your faces. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you joining us uh, this morning. Uh, let's uh, turn now to uh, uh, Charles Twyman. Um, Mr. Twyman. Well, I'm, let me display what I'm wearing. Um, we are actively fighting retirement down here. Today, I was dancing uh, in the main square of a small town here and in Mexico. And that is, in a major way, uh, the responsibility of SICE. Uh, I'm enjoying it. We were raising money for the local uh, Red Cross and we had a flash mob because you cannot have formal groupings of people uh, exceeding uh, 50. And so we had a flash mob, had a, had a fair turnout, made some money, and then I ran, ran back to be here. Um, as I recall, SICE, it was like for the first time in my life, I felt absolutely comfortable with the people around me to the degree that they were all outward looking uh, thinking, uh, whatever human beings. Uh, when I got there, I was convinced by Dean Wilcox that my personality did not fit the State Department, and then I'd better look at uh, business, uh, which turned out to be very, very good advice. And from there, um, I spent my two years at SICE trying to get a job and uh, enjoying myself. Uh, working with and learning from all those around me. And those lessons uh, took me through about 50 years overseas. Uh, my wife and I met in Spanish class at SICE. And after uh, focusing on Latin American studies at SICE, we spent 50 years overseas without being in a Spanish speaking or Portuguese speaking or Latin American country. Now that I'm paying the bills and I'm in Mexico, uh, we are able to use our Spanish. Uh, but in short, uh, we committed ourselves at SICE to the international pattern and we've lived it uh, and very much enjoyed it. And many of the people at this gathering actually contributed uh, a great deal uh, to uh, my uh, maturation and uh, continued comfort with the idea of I'm going to be an internationalist. And so when I went into banking, I was defining myself as an internationalist who was being paid to be a banker. And I went on to become a, a consultant with Deloitte and uh, advised governments and things like this in various places and very much enjoyed that. And then I wanted to do something in retirement so at age 71, I graduated rated with a junior school degree in emergency medicine, uh, became a nationally registered paramedic, and then actually used that in Mexico for a couple of years until I fired myself from the ambulance and then became the treasurer of the local Cruz Roja 
uh, which provides the emergency backup medical care throughout uh, Mexico. Uh, I'm still a supporter, but not actively on the ambulance. Um, the interestingly, internationally, and, and being in strange places uh, like Central Asia and whatever, uh, I tended to meet more people from the public health program. Uh, the public health program is the one that's now being rather much highlighted uh, from Johns Hopkins. Uh, and But in the places we were, we tended to see the uh, public health program. Uh, Sue Minnick, uh, we had the pleasure of seeing uh, in Indonesia and watched her lifetime interest in Indonesia uh, being live, lived out. Uh, and we've tracked Mike and Samar uh, throughout our lives and uh, much envied uh, the punishing places they were living in later years like Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, and so size in balance was very, very good to me. Uh, the only problem it brought to me was having uh, tear gas going into my apartment uh, near DuPont Circle, but uh, I lived through that. So uh, thank you and uh, my pleasure to be joining you. Thank you, uh, sir, appreciate it. It's, um, you, I, I'm just gonna have a few takeaways that um, you were dancing, dressed up, flash mob, and money raised. It sounds like a SICE reunion uh, <laughs> just down in your locality. Uh, it's it's uh, good of you to share all those money. <laughs> well, uh, people may have heard of the uh, Day of the Dead. Uh, the reason I'm in a skeleton is that for the Day of the Dead, which is what you celebrate in Mexico as opposed to Halloween, uh, the Katrina is the the figure that sticks out when you're dressing in uniform and the Katrina is an overdressed skeleton. And so I had a top hat and a mask and, and then the skeleton all over. And um, there were other people of that persuasion. But if you've watched uh, the movies that have come out uh, about the Day of the Dead and it's very interesting historic roots in Mexico, uh, it's fun to live it. It's, um, and to be, to be involved in it. Spanish. <laughs> yes, sir. Is Miss Twyman with you as well? Uh, no, she's not. She's uh, okay. she's got a, a Zumba class that she's helping lead. Uh, so our lack of activity uh, it's it impinging on things like this. <laughs> Understood. I, I just want everyone to know that I I don't really value that as a valid excuse. I my Zumba class to be here. And she should. <laughs> as well. But uh, we move on um, and uh, we have uh, Dr. James Winship. Is uh, Dr. Winship with us? Put out one more call out there. Is, is the good doctor with us? If, if not, I'm going to uh, ask uh, uh, David Barton. Uh, David, I see you on screen. If you would, uh, do you want to say a few words uh, here on this 50th uh, reunion medallion ceremony? Just need you to unmute, sir. No, sorry, I'm joining late. What are what are people mostly talking about? You, can, you have the floor for a minute to talk about your time at SICE or your time 50 years after. So I tuned in just when uh, Chick Twyman was talking about being gassed in DuPont Circle and uh, uh, that had me flash back to uh, my own apartment on 19th Street going off of DuPont Circle being gassed uh, probably at the, on the same event and um, Many of us were participating in various uh, Vietnam War de demonstrations and uh, my brother and a group from New York were filming uh, the demonstration at the uh, South Vietnamese Embassy and uh, we were gassed very badly and uh, there were motorcycles going down our sidewalk just above 19th Street and uh, 
it was uh, quite an event. Anyway, it's wonderful to see everybody. I'm sorry I tuned in uh, and I couldn't quite get on and couldn't hear my very good friend, uh, Mike Pei, uh, speak. But um, I'm glad to join everybody. Uh, I've had a long career in foreign policy and national security issues, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful to join even virtually, <laughs> everyone. And uh, I'm just, uh, I, I'm very happy with my career, very happy with my SICE education, and uh, I joined the SICE Mafia on Capitol Hill, and uh, it was quite a, uh, uh, quite a run I had on Capitol Hill. And then um, I actually participated in the 9-11 investigation and uh, then did the legislation which revised the intelligence community and then did a study on the FBI. And uh, after that, I started teaching at uh, SICE's competitor, the G.W. Elliott School of International Affairs, and I've been teaching there for 12 years. Uh, a course, basically a course on foreign policy and national security related to 9-11. And uh, I've loved the teaching. Uh, it's taken me back to my SICE days, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been a, a great run. So uh, I'm just glad to see everybody and uh, uh, we had some we had some interesting uh, meetings. I, I'm trying to I've been trying to remember who joined those meetings with uh, the dean, Les Janka, but we had meetings about uh, uh, doing reviews of professors. We had meetings about uh, careers, and uh, at least for me anyway, Les Janka was very formative. So um, uh, it's just great to see everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, that covers our uh, role of honor of those who are participating. And now what I'm going to ask you all to do is observe a few moments of silence as we go through uh, the in memoriam to honor those who weren't able to be with us. Again, thank you for your uh, observance of that silence. And, uh, and again, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for me to, again, thank all of the members of the class of 1970 for uh, their uh, presence with us now, their, their continued care for the institution and their lives of achievement and joy and, um, and bounty that uh, we all get to benefit from uh, as members of the SICE community. So again, on this uh, 50th uh, uh, anniversary uh, of, your, of the year of your graduation, we all send to you our hearty congratulations. And I know that when we move into the breakout rooms, all of you with your mentor, we will be taking um, uh, a photo, um, a screenshot photo to, uh, to capture that uh, moment of a class. And again, we, uh, we thank you all for uh, joining us. We are just about bang on time uh, for the next uh, phase of this, uh, today's sessions of moving the various classes into your um, individual breakout rooms. And I wanna um, use uh, this as just a very quick uh, link to sort of remind you that um, our, our orchestrating members behind the scenes will um, make sure that you get into those uh, various breakout rooms. But just very quickly, I wanted to say uh, thank you to all of you for participating in some aspect of the last week. We've had programming uh, associated with reunion on um, four different days with various uh, options. 
Um, and in fact, uh, the, many of you joined different parts and multiple uh, forums is just wonderful. Um, these uh, have been unusual times. And while we would have much more preferred to have you all join us in person, in many ways, this virtual forum has allowed several of you who may not have been able to make the trip to Washington to participate and share and be involved. And I wanna thank all of you for taking that kind of time. I also wanna say uh, that uh, despite the challenging and discouraging atmosphere that often exists out there in the world at the moment, for me and I hope for you, this reunion is very much a bright spot. Uh, reunions are very much about human connection. They're about the triumph of shared values and diverse experiences. And they're also an appreciation of quality and the importance of insight and thoughtfulness as we look at the world. And SICE is a, is a real um, convening space for that, um, not only for when your classes were um, students uh, in the school, but also hopefully you feel that way um, today. What I want to uh, do is to thank all of the organizing committees and the chairs of those committees for their, uh, uh, for their efforts to pull this program together. And I also want to thank uh, my team, my colleagues here on the SICE side uh, for pulling this uh, uh, together as well. This uh, has been a special uh, forum um, where uh, we've been able to connect and have you all uh, join us. So um, again, I thank our teams. I hope though that you see this uh, forum uh, as a one-off. We hope that over the last few days of, of programming that you have actually been more encouraged to stay further involved with SICE um, coming out of reunion. There's a lot of talent, there's diverse energy and enthusiasm of our students. There's depth and nuance that we saw this morning uh, and insight from our faculty. And you heard about a dynamic vision and direction of the, that the school is now being put on, articulated by Dean Cohen a few years ago. So I hope that this interaction encourages you to stay involved um, in the various ways that you can. Being active members of our community enriches our community. So whether it be through referrals of candidates for admission, doing career advising and mentorship, through attending more virtual events and hopefully very soon in-person events uh, that we sponsor, um, and then also through your own personal philanthropy, which we cherish deeply, I hope you will stay active. It makes us better um, to have you as a member of our our uh, society and uh, helping us be a stronger institution. So again, I thank you for taking time out and I will now hand it over um, to Christina to, uh, to move us into the, the time where you get to enjoy yourselves far more. Thank you. Thank you, William, so much for leading today's ceremonies. I would just ask if we could have everyone at this time, please either unmute their mics or use their reaction to give a round of applause to our 50th class um, members here with us today. So thank you so much for all you've contributed to SICE and all you continue to. I'm going to give us a quick uh, housekeeping to move us into our classroom socials. So um, as William has said, as soon as you move into your class specific breakout, we will ask to take a photo of you. Um, Again, we're going to share this out with you for the members of your class who couldn't be here with us today and in the post reunion communications that you'll see in our newsletter and on our website. So uh, with that, um, if you all would turn on your videos and you're, um, you are free to unmute once you move into your class breakout as well. But thank you all so much for being here with us during this week. We are hopeful for the uh, opportunity to bring you back together physically in person next year 